YouTube, what's good? We're back in this thing. Today we're gonna be going over this Ain't It Funny music video by Voreen Meek Mill. I'm gonna be teaching you guys the absolute sauce on how to make your paint look as realistic as possible in Photoshop. So 100% digital, it's gonna be looking like just painted on some paper and took a scan of it and put it right on your computer. With that being said, whoever did this music video, I'm not actually sure because I didn't catch the credits and I didn't see any in the description. So whoever did it, I'm pretty sure actually did some digital uh, paint effects as well. And it was either that or just they just looked really weird. I think we can do better than them if it was digital and if it was actually painted on then I don't know what happened it just looks a little off to me so we'll spot that out and kind of show you guys like what a realistic one looks like and like what the digital one looks like but before we go too far if you're new here be sure to subscribe because what we're doing here is a thing called tutorial mess it's where I upload 31 videos in the 31 days of December so there are plenty of tutorials on my channel already and there's gonna be a lot more to come and they're all pretty dope effects that I don't really see a lot of tutorials on on YouTube so definitely be sure to subscribe and also if you haven't already like and comment on the video because it really does help me out a lot and uh, I'm just trying to push this to as many music video editors as possible so we can kind of just grow as a community but yeah that's enough talking for right now let's get into the video and do this effect so first off before we do anything like this right here I'm almost certain is uh digital I mean it's got to be like the way it looks it just it's got to be digital like it, it's almost like it's uh they painted and then put it on like lighten or lighter color mode as you can see it's only going over the darker things like here it's not there's no paint where it's really light and like cuts off in the darker earth so i think they use some sort of digital painting effects obviously that's digital that's super uh digital looking but but we're gonna be getting something pretty close to this and if it isn't real uh i think our effect's gonna look kind of just like this so let's go and find a spot where we want i already have it marked out and what you do is you just take a screenshot of the, the spots you want so I took a screenshot every three frames. So this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. You can do that by going over to the export frame button here uh, and clicking that and then saving it as something. I'd like to number them so it's a little easier to see when you're actually in Photoshop or whatever. But yeah, you can do that or you can hold Control Shift E to do it a little faster. And then once you take a screenshot, I would mark it out. You don't really have to, but it's just nice to know where you were at for each screenshot. But yeah, that's all we're gonna be doing in Premiere for right now. So let's hop into Photoshop and import your image. So the first thing that I do when I go ahead and do this effect is drag some kind of paper asset on. I'm using the Black Sheet 7 for my paper rips and folds pack. You can also use stuff from like my paper textures pack, uh, or you can just find some paper texture online. I really like this one in particular because it's like super high quality and just kind of, I don't know, has a really good aesthetic for this effect, I think. So I'm actually going to just drag it so there's no paper rips, or if they are, they're just like kind of in the corners like here. We can drag it over the screen one and turn off all the other layers. And you can play with around with the blending modes. Like you, there's a lot you can do. So you can make it look really interesting or whatever. Lighting looks really cool in my opinion and color dodge looks pretty cool But I think I'm gonna stick with screen just the closest to like an actual piece of paper And then what we're gonna do is go ahead and go to image adjustments And we're selected on the paper layer right now and go to photo filter Now I like using sepia and then just drag that up a bit What that's gonna do is just kind of make it look a little bit more warm and kind of like give it that old feel I think I'm gonna do something like 75 So remember that number so when we go and do other effects you can have it memorized So you can use that 75% again and then you can kind of just I just turned it off so you can kind of see what it did to the paper it made it look like a little bit older brownish and then what we can go ahead and do is also add some grain this time to the actual image itself you don't have to go too crazy with it i just like adding a little three here and we can turn off that layer and just kind of see what that did if it's a smart layer you can uh see what it does and if you want to make it a smart layer if it's not already you can go to convert to smart object and what that's going to do is allow you to change the effects you put on it or you can turn them off too so like if i wanted to change the noise i could go here and drag it higher like crazy or whatever but yeah i think for right now three looks good and then what we're gonna do is make a new layer and we can call this one smudge or smear or whatever you want to call it because this is how you kind of get the effect you use actually two different things i'm gonna have the link to all the paint brushes that i'm using in the description i'm almost positive they're 100 free to everyone but if not they're 100 free to everyone that has an adobe account so if you don't have an adobe account go snag one and then i'm gonna be using the kyle's paintbrush bristle smudge it's underneath the paint box folder inside of the mega pack and then i'm just gonna change the strength down to something like 80 here and then make sure you clicked on sample all layers and what that's going to do is basically blend all the layers below the layer that it's on if you start going like this you can see that it kind of is smearing it it's almost like you oil painted it or whatever and you can change the sizes to it like just to get like little little details i'm going to keep it underneath the water here and then we're going to have the paint come in from the outside and like go up uh the subject here so what we can do is do this like kind of the same distance on the other side you can go up and down and stuff too like the more blurry you make it the better you don't have to keep it super strict I'll even go over here and kind of do that because we're going to be covering this up anyways. And this in itself is a cool effect. If you wanted to just do this and make it look 
like it was an oil paint, you could easily do that. But for the effect, we're gonna try to make the paint look as realistic as possible. So again, just clicking everywhere, kind of making it look crazy. And then we're gonna make another layer called paint. I'm gonna be using the brush called Nice Big Mess here. What you do is just sample a color from wherever you're painting. And you can change it around a little bit. It doesn't have to be the exact color. I'm gonna make it something a little bit darker. And then make sure you change the flow mode uh, down to most of the time, I like something below 10%. So something like 6% here probably will be good. And you can play around with the brush size. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. Also just make sure you're on that paint layer and then just start kind of painting around. You can see that it it's looking pretty good right now. Dragging it around. You can go over where you made it blurry just a little bit, change the brush size a little bit. And then something like, like that looks good. And then this is where you got to remember the photo filter number. I'm going to go ahead and drag sepia on it and drag it. You don't have to do the exact number. I like changing it up a little bit and making it something close to it. So like something like 59 for my case looks good and then clicking OK. And then I'm also going to go to noise and add some noise to it. This time a lot less, a lot, lot less. So you can barely see it and then click OK. And already right there, that looks pretty good. And then you can do stuff like change the blending mode if you want. There's plenty of ones that look good. Find one that you like if you're going to do it. I think for me, I'm not going to. And then if you want to add a little bit more depth to the, the paint itself, I just went to blending options on the uh, paint layer and went to something like, and then went to something like inner glow, just kind of sampled this color. And then you can play with whatever looks good to you. What this is going to do is just add a little bit of lightness to it. If you add it to screen and you can even add noise if you want, I'm not going to. And you can change around a lot of these settings and just play with it. I'm going to do something like satin too. sample the color and then just play with it around with the opacity. Like you can get it looking like something like that. So if you wanted it to be like really crazy and then you can play around with these uh, contours, you can like change everything. Basically, I don't know exactly what this does, but I, it just makes it a little bit darker. So it adds like a lightness and a darkness factor to the paint. And then you can go to drop shadow and uh, again, just kind of sample that color. You can make it a little bit darker if you want, drag it on. And this isn't necessary. I just think it like, I don't know, just adds a little bit of like more realistic aspect to it, in my opinion, at least. And yeah, if you want, you can even change like the, the opacity of each of the paint layers, or you can even, I didn't mention this, but you can change the blending mode of the smudge here if you want. You can turn off the paint layer and you can see what that does. Something like lighting looks really cool because it has like just like a little bit of paint in some places. Just kind of showing you the little options of what you can do. But yeah, that looks pretty good. If you want, you can control J it and then merge the layers. That way you can toss all the stuff you've worked on in a folder so you don't have to worry about like not liking it and coming back to changing it so that's what our first image looks like and we can go to file save and save it to a spot where you're going to remember i'm going to put it in a folder actually and name it something like one so that way when you import it into premiere you can just drag it in in order and then i'm going to just choose the highest setting and if you want to stay consistent with the overlay, what I'm going to do is just copy the black sheet overlay and drag it over screen too. If you want, you can just like move it around a little bit. So it's not like the same exact piece, but like it has the same uh, texture to it. So that's what I'm just going to do. Again, going to new layer and then going to brushes and going to the smudge. Make sure you're sampled on and change the blending or the strength down to whatever you had before. And this time I'm not going to have it as close to the edge. I'm going to have it a little bit off because it's slowly going into him. I did six frames total, so I'm going to do it uh, three frames in the water and then three frames on him. Have it kind of in the middle here because there's going to be one more and then onto him. And then make another layer and go to the same brush you used. The nice big messes with the one I used. And then use the same strength. And actually, to make it more realistic, you can just change the, the flow strength between each one. So it's not like super consistent and like digitalized. That makes sense. So we're just going through and then going to image, photo filter, sepia, and then this same kind of number. I think it was 69 last time. And then add some noise. And then I'm going to be sure to add some noise to the actual image itself. I think we did something like three last time. And then again, just controlling all of these and duplicating them and then dragging them into that group. And then we can merge this and render it out. Hide that layer. Again, drag that black sheet up here. Make a new layer. Make sure it's above that. Go into the photo brush using the smudge. Then we're doing everything kind of around him here, even slowly merging into him. new layer then the nice big mess again make sure you're on that different layer here and change the flow a little bit and then since we're slowly merging into them i'm just gonna sample like a like a lighter skin tone maybe something like here and then you can do this on a separate layer or the same layer uh, i'm just gonna 
kind of blend it in a bit. So you kind of start getting this color because this is the color that I'm going to transfer to. Do like a few big ones or something. And then again, the image adjustments and go to photo filter, sepia or whatever you chose and bring it up and then the noise. Again, just duplicating it in case we want to go back and change and then just merging that and saving it. And then we'll do this last one and then I'll just finish the next two off camera just because it gets a little bit repetitive. Again, just change the strength to 78 or something a little bit smaller. Make sure you sample all the layers, go to the photo filter, add some noise. And then I just realized I was actually forgetting for the last few to do the blending options on the other two that I did before this. So that's why it's a good idea to save your uh, groups or whatever. So I'm gonna go back and find which ones I didn't do it to. So I did this one. So I just need to go to this layer and then you can just go ahead and copy and paste the layer style. And what that's gonna do is just apply the layer style. So now we can go ahead and save this and just replace the number two one. And then we can do the same thing here, paste the layer style and replace this one and that's why it's always a good idea to do that because there's a lot of like moving parts that go to this effect so you uh you always kind of want to have a backup version you go here and then paste the layer style merge these and then i'm going to save this and i'll uh i'll see you guys in premiere and then I just finished up the last two photos or whatever, and I just want to let you guys know that just because I use a nice big mess doesn't mean that uh, that's the only paintbrush that works. Like, I've tried it with a lot of these paintbrushes, and a majority of them look really good. Uh, some of them just don't really look good. I think as long as you as long as you change on the flow a little bit or whatever, you'll get some similar looks. Just keep that in mind. You don't have to use the same whatever. Like, this one looks really cool. Yeah, just wanted to let you guys know so you, you're not just uh, using only that paintbrush. So then you just want to import all the images you just made, and then you can drag them in and change the length to three instead of two you could also go to uh edit preferences and then change the uh, default duration to three frames instead of two and then it would uh import it that way for right now this looks pretty good and then you can see we got that going up paint effect right there i think that looks pretty cool you could definitely spend a lot more time on the uh the overall effect and make it something more realistic looking keep in mind that i'm doing this for a tutorial and don't want to spend all the time in the world doing it i think overall it looks pretty realistic i think i kind of rushed the last few frames or whatever when it's like on him and maybe use like not the best color i think that effect's really cool yeah like i said i used black sheet seven from my paper rips and folds pack the link to it will be in the description below if you want to go ahead and purchase that that'd be awesome that supports me a lot and you guys get a bunch of dope assets to do paper rip effects from if not there's always the sample pack on the website so you can go and snag that i really appreciate you if you made it all the way to the end if you're not subscribed already go ahead and click subscribe and turn on the post notification bell and if you haven't liked and commented already go ahead and tell me what effect to do next in the comments below but yeah guys that's pretty much it for the video